Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Another movie review in the month of October since it's Halloween month. Yeah, and having to review Rob Zombie's bastardization of a hilarious, hauntingly, frighteningly a family series that came out in the 60s, often a competitor to the Addams Family called The Monsters. I love that show. I never get tired of it. I've seen it ever since I watched them in reruns when it was on local TV, like KTLA, as well as KDOC. KTLA again, of course. <laughs> but I also watched it on, on Nick and Night, TV Land, Cozy TV, even Peacock streaming. But most of all, I got the DVD now which I'm so proud to own. And I did own the two movies that come with it. They, I also forgot to mention that both of these films got Blu-ray releases from Shell Factory. So it's great. And they have yet to release all the other ones, if they ever do. They say that they might be available on streaming uh, for the Mini Monsters, as well as... Um, this was one of the two uh, TV movies that aired on Fox. Um, what I think is the Scary Little Christmas, the one that, that we're going to put up. Okay. And actually, I, I meant to say, I think it was called The Haunting of Super El Bisto um, that Rob Zombie did, which I didn't mind. Um... <laughs> Sometimes I make mistakes, trust me. But it, it wasn't worth your time. I mean, the jokes were not funny. The, they tried to, He tried to go for, for this particular look. He didn't go for the black and white touch, but he did, however, use, like, washed out colors and tilted camera angles and all that stuff put into it and it had some other characters to join in too because after all this is an origin story I mean this is where Herman finally met Lily they got married uh, I forgot to mention there was this one scene and I think that was voiced by Butch Patrick uh, where they show the tin can scene it almost looked a little bit like um, like Boris in one of the episodes and yeah, they were going to adopt him and um yeah there's a lot of um symbol a lot of red herrings in in the movie um oh yeah they did adopt uh, spot when he was a very young dragon <laughs> yeah and lily is actually a vampire um by the way I, yeah vampire daughter and all that but it looked like a source for stuff in some ways Whatever, I, I make mistakes sometimes. We all do. Okay, well, enough of that. But now it's going to be another review, and it's also going to be a negative review, too. I'm sorry. But I'm just amazed to hear and find out that now we got another movie that's based on the Predator franchise called Prey, which is the latest film that's available on streaming through Hulu. Yeah, I have Hulu, by the way, and, and they have a lot of TV shows and movies available. Sometimes they even have their own exclusives, like originals, and they even have movies um, that are produced by Disney. Or this rate, um, 20th Century Studios or Searchlight Pictures that Disney have bought them out ever since they bought Fox. Um, I was already done with this franchise. I really was ever since they did The Predator back in 2018. I remember how offensive I felt when I saw that. Yet alone, 
a totally butchered reboot or just a follow-up as they claim and I was disappointed because the fact that it was written and directed by Shane Black and he got his uh, co-writer uh, Fred Decker to join and Shane Black was in the original Predator so what went wrong? everything they got some lousy characters. They managed to get an autistic kid to be in this movie, which is really insulting. Because it's, as we all know, they're always going to be used to be made fun of by tons of bullies. And then next thing you know, he's going to get into bigger trouble once he finds a package filled with all the equipment that the Predator had. And then he's going to dress up for Halloween and he's just going to start shooting people. Unbelievable. What were they thinking? It's not funny. It's not exciting. It's so preposterous. I hated it so fucking much. And I love the original Predator. I became a fan of that film. It became my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Predator 2 is a very underrated sequel with Danny Glover. Joining in with a great cast like the late great Bill Paxton. Um, Maria Conchita Alonso. Gary Busey. Ruben Bla Blades or Blades, uh, whatever you pronounce it, and any other actor in the film. I still haven't reviewed that one. I'm so surprised. But that sequel doesn't get much respect it deserves. I don't understand. People say that because, oh, we're now being focused on another storyline where instead of being in the jungle, it's in the city, which is Los Angeles. There's nothing wrong with that. They're going for some new heights here. I know they couldn't get Arnold Schwarzenegger to reprise his role as Butch, but that's okay. He had to do Terminator 2. That's why he couldn't do this. And he just did Kindergarten Cop so and Total Recall. So that's why he couldn't do that. He was on schedule. And that's fine. I mean, we have more room for comfort for other actors to play the parts. And I know we got Alien vs. Predator, though. I mean, too bad it wasn't exactly in the spirit of the comics that they could have done. I mean, it's amazing how the video game gets it right, but not the movie. Um, but I don't mind the movie, the first one, even though, yeah, I had a horrible feeder experience at the time. I already explained that, folks, but I'm not going to say it again. Um, you just got to look for some of my videos, you will find out. Maybe under bad movie feeder experience, you'll find that. Um, the sequel was just garbage, done by the Brother Srouts. They don't know what they're doing. They made it pitch black, seeing that it was set in Los Angeles, just like the second movie. And Put no effort whatsoever. Even the cast is is just a bunch of you know untalented ones. Nothing special. They look like they just came from all these bad B movies. And then we got Predators, uh, which had a great cast to join. I mean, yeah, people criticize that movie. People dismiss it because of their lead actor, which was Adrian Brody. Um, Adrian Brody's a great actor, no doubt about it. Um, it's like he was trying to become more tough and sneer like um, Arnold was. I mean, everybody's trying to be as tough as far as that's concerned. Um, it has a similarity to the original, but I still think it's it's quite different from any other. I didn't mind that movie. 
it was set in a different uh, planet that ha actually has a jungle there too so this was their planet so they can do whatever they want so that's what they're doing with the humans so they're being sent there almost feels a little bit like no escape uh, the Ray Liotta film God rest his soul so now we got a new Prey film. So now we got a new Predator film called Prey. And this time it has Amber McFunder. She plays a Comanche native. You know, a, a woman who's trying to learn how to become a hunter. So eventually she ends up hunting, as we know it, the vicious humanoid alien known as the Predator. And this is supposed to set back in 1719 in the Great Plains. So, uh, I wasn't looking forward to this. I saw the trailer and I remember being bored. I saw the second trailer. It didn't impress me at all. I had to see it for my own on Hulu uh, back in August and I can't believe this movie got so much hype like like there's no tomorrow critics out of all people claim this to be the best film of the franchise since the first movie is enough to make you wanna put your fingers in your mouth and vomit that's an insult to the original movie. There is no way that this film's ever going to top it. Not no way, not no how. And these are the same people that can't even get any respect to the movie Alita Battle Angel that could have had the same percentage, 93% on Rotten Tomatoes, as a deserves these are the same people who also recommend that piece of shit cuties the controversial movie about a bunch of little girls dancing and twerking and soon they're going to become adults it's their political agenda what a joke I'm sorry I had to sound like this, but trust me, I at least I have some better taste these days than these guys. It's like everyone has to be a snob. And they praise something like this, and it then it just disappointed everyone for those who grew up with it. Or for those who, who've known about it for decades. Predator still holds up today. Even when it's shot on film. I mean, it's bad enough Fox has been treating that film like crap on, on home video, mostly uh, Blu-rays, when they did it with, um, when after the DVD release, with all the special features included, they released the first Blu-ray release, and they, they came out all bare bones, just like the first DVD was. So it's almost like they're trying to copy that idea. I mean, imagine how Laserdisc was doing at the time. Um, so they released the Blu-ray with just the movie and the trailer. Even though the transfer was great, I'll give you that. Probably the best film will ever look. But many people have complained, but some people have complained about that, thinking it's not the best transfer. Well, then the Ultimate Hunter's Edition came along, and it's supposed to be a 4K remaster, a scan exactly how it should be, except they just can't stop using the DNR switch. And look how bad it looked. It all looked completely smeared, waxy. It doesn't get the, the perfect image that the film's supposed to look like. 
and they just took out all the grain that they removed, making it look like it was shot digitally, but it's not. Yeah. Didn't work. And now they got a 4K release. And it has the best transfer they ever got that they've been waiting for. And to this day, I still haven't owned that one. Not even all the other sequels that join in on that collection. And I hope I can get that someday too. I mean, even though it does going to cost a um, little more money than ever. Like it might cost like over $40. Unless you can get it for less. I mean, who knows. But it does take time to to buy 4Ks for a lot cheaper. Because I know how Blu-rays have to be too. I, mean, I just hope someday I will get that. If anything. Because I have owned Predator twice on Blu-ray. And I had that old recording off of Fox. So I, I That's why I love this movie so much. I could live with it. I mean, the reason I got the Ultimate Hunters edition was because of the features. You know, at least the features made it up for it. Despite of that transfer. So, I can live with that. But let's just hope that I'd be able to get that someday. I wouldn't be surprised if Prey ends up on physical media, too. Because I'm sure they probably will put it out. Unless they'd be stuck in streaming mode. <laughs> Whatever. Also, the Comanche Naru looks a little bit like, um, hard to believe, but she looks a little bit like Rosa Zalazar, you know, from Alita Battle Angel, you know, the Maze Runner. I know she had the series uh, Undone, and there's also a Netflix series that she did. Um, and I, I would love to check these out. I mean, I have seen the first season of Undone. I need to check the second season. It's available. I thought maybe that was her, but it's not. Um, but she has been in some TV shows that were on FX, uh, including uh, Reservation Dogs. Uh, I'm sure it's not related to Reservoir Dogs, but that's a possibility. Um, she was in Longmire... She was in Roswell, New Mexico, the CW series. I think this was a spinoff to Roswell from the WB. And she was even on the series Legion. So that's her. Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, here goes something. The movie stars Amber McFunder, Dakota Beavers, what a name, Danny D'Allegro, Michelle Frost, Julian Black, Antelope, what is with these names, Coco, Stormy Kip, Mike Patterson, Bennett Taylor, Nelson Lays and Troy Mundell. Yes, it's based on the characters by the Thomas brothers, Jim and John. You know, worked on the original movie and, and all. It's written by Patrick Eisen and Dan Trackenberg, who also directed the movie. Which, it's the same director who gave us 10 Cloverfield Lane. And I love that movie. The, the sequel to Cloverfield. That was a great sequel. The movie began, said, in 1719 in the Great Plains, we meet a young Comanche native woman named Naru, who's played by Amber McFunder, who's trained as a healer, but has dreamed to become a hunter someday. Just like her brother, Tabe, is played by Dakota Beavers. What a name. Uh, joined in by her dog, Sari, played by Coco. They were tracking a deer, ready to hunt. She witnessed the lights of an alien predator, 
spacecraft, which interprets as a Thunderbird. Taking a sign to prove herself to see exactly where it came from. That it came from outer space somewhere? Who knows? But at the village, uh, one of the tribe hunters, they have taken a mountain lion that they're ready to hunt. Tabe says that Naru had, had to come to the search party only to track the cougar and prove, provide all the medical treatment they need if they could find the hunter alive. When they found the ruined hunter and departed, Tabe had stayed behind to search and find the lion that they were ready to, to hunt and kill. But they found some large unusual tracks and a meticulously skinned rattlesnake are really amazing. There's a lot of digital animals that you saw around the forest. Like you do spot a, a wolf who's ready to hunt a rabbit before the predator came and ready to slaughter. Yeah, the predator did have all the equipment that he has. He even wears a skull head a visor as a shield and all. Yeah, he does camouflage and all that. So, Naru circles back with Pake and finds Tabe. Together, the, the three of them had set a trap for the mountain lion to be captured and slaughtered. But ends up killing Pake, and Naru eventually spots um, as she faces off with the cougar and ends up... Um, hearing all all this uh, weird sounds from the distance as we assume it turns out that yes the predator had came all camouflaged and just came and and slaughtered the lion which at this rate as a stroke um tabe found the lion proving that he was responsible for slaughtering with Nauru not getting much credit. Yeah, so they want to prove that. Earning him to become the war chief. Nauru was jealous. So therefore, they begin to see what's going on, consider there's a greater threat that's happening. Nauru departs with Sari. She comes across a herd of of skinned bison then there was even a grizzly bear on the loose and they're chasing them around and then next thing you know the predator had came and ready to slaughter skin them and all given much of her time and I know all the other tribes were were being chased too and, and they were also ready to stop stop them but too late because they got killed too. Uh, one of them might still be alive. Who knows? So the predator ambushed and killed the man in combat. Naru is caught in a foothold trap. Predator has leaves as he no longer sees her as a threat. Yeah. Then we get to meet French uh, voyagers who just came by. Responsible for slaughtering the bison, and and already had trapped uh, both Naru and caged her completely. They even caged her brother Tabe. So their interpreter Raphael Adelini had questioned Naru about the predator, which the Frenchmen have about to encounter for for years. And when she refused to talk, the Voyager had revealed that the top, that since they already captured her, her brother and tortured him, using them as bait, so that way they'll get into the predator once they, once he arrives, and then that's where it's going to lead to more attacks. 
and at this rate both Naru and Tabe were on, on the prepared to join in with other tribes to join to attack the predator even now the predator is about to attack the French voyagers they even set them up as a trap too some of them have lost their their legs their limbs and and their arms and then they even try to um, try to make sure that the predator doesn't spot them uh, they even want to make sure one of them is dead but chances are predator is going to end up killing them anyway one way or the other then her brother died while come back while combat and then next we you know she ends up uh, taking one of the the lead French boyers which is Raphael and apparently she set a trap on him so that way the predator will arrive which the predator incredibly ignored Nauru and just wound up slaughtering the guy right away at night um, and because she's all alone by the way you know she's all alone and now she's gonna ready to attack the predator and she's gonna be able to use him as bait and and um, she already set up the trap there's no way out but what did what do you know the predator kills himself and now the following morning we now have Naru holding the last remains of the predator holding the 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 head and now she has the proof to now become a hunter just like her brother unfucking believable Nauru is just a petulant, spoiled brat. She is not a strong female character. I did not see that whatsoever. Come on. Rosa Zalazar, when she played Alita Battle Angel, as we all know, Alita, she can kick more ass than this girl ever does. And she's a strong female character who unfortunately had... A short-term memory lost until it finally came back to her after she started fighting those bad guys. And that had a great story, heart of soul and all, based on the manga. Whereas this one has nothing at all. Uh, also, I forgot that there's even a scene in the movie which that's kind of led to the connection to Predator 2. Um, if you remember the ending in Predator 2, you'll know that there's a scene where one Predator actually found the gun of what turned out to be the Frenchman Voyager. It's shown in this movie. That's a clue seemingly to explain that the Predator had been there at the time, which at this rate... It was one of the predators who, who found the gun. Or perhaps I think the I think uh, Naru actually had the gun and then probably gave it to the predator the other predator and all. But it really uh, had a lot of clues right there. It's not very exciting. It was pretty boring. Um I didn't find the characters any uh, luck whatsoever uh, they did manage to use the Comanche language it's amazing how the dog is the only great actor in this entire movie and the dog can do everything I'm so glad that that dog didn't get slaughtered it could have been worse because I know all the other animals have been slaughtered even more <laughs> So yeah, um, Dan Trackenberg, his direction 
at times could be solid. I'll give you that. I mean, the look of the movie being set in the forest, through the mountains, in the tribes, and in, in, in the Great Plains. So it looks beautiful and breathtaking as it could be. But it just doesn't save it from a lousy script. And it doesn't save it without, you know, better characters or colorful. And it's really an insulting to Native Americans, yet alone, yet alone other Natives, too. I even heard that they didn't even bother to cast any real Natives to play the parts. So, there you go. But let's not go that far, because every actor can play any other kind of of um, of race and culture and all but this is not done very well I don't understand for this budget of 65 million dollars wow I mean the CGI effects were not that special at all um, Sure, there are some blood and gore scenes here and there, you know, body limbs getting slashed, people got skinned, and all. There's some gruesome scenes here and there, but that's pretty much it. Um, I, it's fine that people love this movie, and I can respect people's opinions here, but... I just can't see it. I just can't. Not at all. I just... It's just forgettable. I, I'm, I'm sure from time to time, no one's going to even remember this one. Especially when it's on a streaming platform. Where all movies go to die. But that's not fair. Because there are great movies that came on a streaming platform. But it'd probably be even much better if it had came out in theaters, yet alone a physical media. <sighs> wow. Um, if I want to see a movie about natives, I would rather watch Dances of the Wolves, along with Last of the Dogmen, a very underrated film, and even... Um, the Last of the Mohicans, both the original and the Michael Mann version. Those are great movies right there about natives. There are other great native films out there, and it's better than this. Even Avatar is better than this. And that's based on a native story. Seriously, man. And the fact that this gets praised more than, than the original? They say it's even the best film since the first film? Are you kidding me? Predator 2 belongs in that category. That's a better sequel. Man, people today make me sick sometimes. I know everybody has their own taste. It's cool. But I just don't get it. I really don't. I love movies. I love new movies too, okay? But I want to see something better. Come on, man. I mean, in the year of Top Gun Maverick and Hocus Pocus 2, Son of the Hedgehog 2, and I'm still looking forward to the new Enchanted sequel. Come on, man. Even Doctor Strange 2 is better than this. And I enjoy that one. And 4. Love and Thunder. Even Jurassic World. Dominion. It's better than this. Sorry, man. I just don't find anything special about it. Okay? And... I don't care about the performance of Amber McFunder. I, I know she can be a great actress, and maybe she will someday. I just didn't care for this role that she played, all right? 
And she's no Rosa Zalazar, either. I bet she would have kicked more ass, too. I, I'm, I'm just really done with this. I really do need to uh, review Predator 2. And I can't believe I still haven't reviewed that. Not even Predators from 2010. Even that's better than this. I'm sorry I'm repeating myself, but this is too much. Anyway, and the Predator wasn't really that interesting at all, either. I mean, it's supposed to be the earlier version of Predator before we got introduced to the other ones, uh, other alien creatures as we speak, all, all the followers. And he just wears a, a skull head of, of some animal that, yeah, which is the bison. So he, he got the, the skull of the bison. That uses as a, a visor and a helmet. Not interesting at all. Uh, it has some nice equipment, but that's it. And I know it's set at, at that period, so who knows what they do. I know people keep saying it's woke or woke this, woke that. I get it. They even try to make her strong and heroic. And you saw the poster too, art on the internet, where they show her, you know, using the green blood as war paint, just like how Alita used the dog's blood, you know, getting ready for for battle. When he says, "I do not stand by in the presence of evil," uh, she can't even stand by in the presence of of madness here. Yeah, but here's a comparison. Alita is strong, caring girl, while Naru is just a spoiled brat. All she cares about is being a hunter. I could understand that, but it's like she just doesn't seem to care about anything but herself. That's the problem. She's totally unlikable. If, if the writing had gave her some hope and dreams here, then I would have um, got into the character so well, but I can't. I just can't connect it to it. That's sad. I would have sworn that Naru actually used the line from the first Predator, which is, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Because that's the most famous line of them all. And yes, they do use a lot of weaponries like arrows, you know, bow and arrows, and other kinds of arrows they use to hunt. I mean, they can do anything. I mean, this was during the, the era of tribes and all. There's even a scene in the beginning where, where she was asleep inside... Um, the hut where you know it, she ends up getting woken up by her relatives i think his brother probably woke him up in this one scene and he, and he keeps waking her up a lot while she had the dog and just to go out and, and continue hunting and practicing hunting and all that everything that's the movie prey and i'm going to give the film for the bottom of my heart, okay, I mean, it's fine if you love it, but I'm just going to leave it in my personal opinion, and I'm going to keep it that way. One star. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye.